In this video, we're going to look at the concept of the mole. And many of you from high school probably remember that there is a fundamental number associated with the mole, and that is that there is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things for every one mole. So we're setting this up such that the concept of the mole becomes a unit conversion. In essence, it's very similar to the dozen. Um, when you have a dozen, you know automatically that you have 12 of whatever it is. So if you get a dozen bagels, that means that you have 12 bagels. Well, the mole is a very similar sort of concept. When you have a mole of something, whatever it is, you know that you have precisely 6.022, and it goes on, uh, times 10 to the 23rd of those things. And the reason why I write items is because this can be fairly general. I mean, in, in typically, these, this refers to something like atoms, or molecules, or ions, um, it could be anything. But in essence, you could have something like a mole of basketballs. Um, that would be a ridiculously large number of basketballs, but it makes sense. Now, if you think about the dozen, the reason why the dozen makes sense is because when you get 12 of something, that's typically a reasonable number for a family, right? So a dozen bagels is a reasonable number for of bagels to buy for a family. That's kind of where it came from. Well, with moles, it's the same concept. In instead of it being bagels, we're talking about atoms and molecules. And what it's really allowing us to do is bridge the gap between what we call the microscopic world and the macroscopic world. So if we kind of remember back, when we talk about an atom or a molecule, just one. So when you talk about a single atom or a single molecule, the mass is typically in AMUs. And if you remember, one AMU is a very, very small amount of mass in grams. It's a 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24 grams, or it's 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Same number, um, but I'm going to use grams here because it turns out that in the macroscopic world, Generally, when we weigh things out, we weigh things out in, in a number of grams. Uh, so when you walk up to a balance in a lab you and you do your first experiment, your balance is going to read out in grams, and you're going to weigh out something like 2 grams. Now, if you look, because one atom or molecule is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24 grams, we're going to need a lot of those atoms or molecules to get us up to a mass in grams, meaning we're going to need a tremendous number of those things to get uh, from one all the way up to what we can actually weigh out on a balance. That's the reason why the mole is so large. So the link that allows us to go between the microscopic world and the macroscopic world is the mole. And that magic number is not necessarily magic. It actually is a really significant uh, number in chemistry. And I'm going to show you why in a second. So let's ask a, a, what, seems, what might seem to be a very straightforward question. How much does one mole of hydrogen atoms weigh? This would make a lot of sense, right? So if you had one mole of hydrogen atoms, uh, presumably this is something that we could weigh out on a balance. That's why we use the mole. It's supposed to be the bridge between the microscopic and macroscopic world. So let's set this up as a unit conversion. So the first thing we have to do is, well, we have to figure out, well, how much does an H atom weigh in the, the microscopic world? So in the microscopic world, we go to our peri periodic table and we see that one H atom is equal to 1.008 grams, or I'm sorry, not grams, AMUs. And I get this from the periodic table. So I went to my periodic table, I look up the average atomic mass for um, an H atom, and that's what I get. So I get 1.008 AMUs. So let's set this up as a unit conversion. So we know that there's 1.008 AMUs for every one H atom. So that's our starting point. Now our ending point, the question is going to be, well, how many grams are there for every one mole of H atoms. So we want to go from AMUs per H atom for one to grams per mole, um, which is something we can weigh out in lab. So let's use the unit conversions that we have on hand. So we know, let's start with the mole. We know that for every 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd H atoms, we have one mole. 
And the reason why I set it up this way is because now the H atoms will cancel, giving us moles on the bottom, which is what we want. So for every one mole of H atom, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And you can see how this is starting to work. We have to multiply these, this AMU by a large number to get us into grams. And the reason for that is because if we remember for every one AMU, and I put this on the bottom so that AMUs cancel, we have uh, 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. So now with this unit conversion, I have um, grams on top, I have H atoms on the bottom, and we should be good to go. So if we take 1.008, multiply it by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and then multiply that by 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24 grams, um, we get a magic number of 1.008 grams per mole. Now it's not magic, it actually makes a lot of sense. This number of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd doesn't come out of the sky. It comes for a very specific reason. It's because that specific number will make it such that when you have whatever you have in the, in the uh, microscopic world, uh, if one H atom weighs 1.008 grams, then one mole of whatever it is is going to have the same mass in grams, will equal 1.008 grams. So in essence, that magic number of the mole allows us to say that if one H atom weighs 1.008 AMUs, one mole is equal to 1.008 grams. And I can do this for other things, right? So now that we know this relationship, we don't have to constantly do this unit conversion. Let's take CO2, for example. So one molecule of CO2 weighs 44 AMUs approximately. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually calculate that value. But um, for now, just take my word for it that one molecule of CO2 weighs 44 AMUs. That's the, com that's the sum of the carbon plus the oxygen atoms. Well, now that we know this, that for whatever the mass is in AMUs, we know that one mole of CO2 is going to weigh 44 grams. So that's the link. So we can, another way of writing this is for every one molecule of CO2, that's going to equal 44 AMUs. And we can say for every one mole of CO2, that's going to equal 44 grams. We can extend the concept of the mole even further. So how can we use the mole? So how can we make the mole practical? And really, the way that we do this is through unit conversions. So the way to think about this is that we can essentially go in two different directions from the mole. So if we have one mole of something, we know that we can get to the number of things from by using Avogadro's number. So if we want to get a number of atoms, for example, or molecules or whatever, we can use Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd for every one mole. And that unit conversion is going to allow us to interconvert between the number of things and the mole. So if, for example, I were to give you a number of atoms, whatever it is, X number of atoms, we can convert that to the mole by using the unit conversion of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So we can divide this by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd for every one mole. The number of atoms will cancel, and now we're going to get our answer in moles. So that's one way that we can use uh, the unit conversion of the Avogadro's number as a way of allowing us to go between atoms and moles. Now, there's another spoke that we can create on this chart, and that is going to allow us to go between grams and moles. And in this case, this is going to be what we call the atomic or the molecular mass. And we know, we can look this up on the periodic table, we know how much something weighs in AMUs. And once we know how much it weighs in AMUs, we know how much it weighs in grams per mole. So this tends to have units of grams per mole. And this can allow us to go, this can allow us to get from a mass to a number of moles. So let's say that we had y grams of carbon, for example. So if we go to the periodic table, we can look up how much one mole weighs. So one mole of carbon is going to equal 12.01 grams. Uh, I get that directly from the entry on the periodic table. I can now go from grams to moles using this. I can take, say that 
um, for every 12.01 grams, there is one mole of carbon. And that's going to give us moles of carbon. And what's really important, uh, what's really useful with this is we can actually interconvert from grams all the way to number of atoms or molecules. So let's say, for example, we want to go from grams to number of molecules. Well, we're going to have to go through the mole. Um, by going through the mole, we have a link now between grams and the number of atoms or molecules. So in this case, let's say that we were to have um, a certain number of grams of carbon. Let's take take 24 grams of carbon. Uh, of carbon. Well, we can do this unit conversion. So if we want to figure out how many uh, atoms of carbon we have, let's look at the unit conversions we have on hand. So the first thing we can do is well, we can go from grams to moles. And we're going to do that by taking the molecular weight or the atomic weight of carbon. So we looked that up on the periodic table and we see, well, there's 12.01 grams for every one mole. So we get rid of grams of carbon and now we're in moles of carbon. And because we know that for every one mole of carbon, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, atoms of carbon our moles are going to cancel, we can now go directly from a mass all the way to atoms by going through the mole. Very similar to how we go through the base unit in uh, unit conversions. So uh, 12, 24 divided by 12 uh, times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, if you plug this into your calculator, you're going to get something that's very close to basically 2 times uh, Avogadro's number, which is 1.2 times 10 to the 24th atoms of carbon. So the way that you would get that is you take 24 grams, multiply it by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, uh, then you would divide that number by 12.01, and you're going to get one point, something close to 1.2 times 10 to the 24 atoms of carbon. So the, the really important and powerful tool of this is that we now have two unit conversions that allow us to take some unit in either grams or number of molecules and get to the mole. And once we have the number of moles, we can get to any one of those two places using the unit conversions we have on hand. And the key ones to remember are that we need the we need the we need Avogadro's number and that's going to allow us to interconvert between atoms and molecules in the mole. And we need the molecular mass which we can get directly from the period the molecular atomic mass which we can get from the, the periodic table and that's going to allow us to go between grams in the mole. So in a couple of videos, we'll do some more practice with this, with some more practical types of problems. But this gives you an introduction to the mole as a concept and the mole as a unit conversion.